it's not unrealistic to think that FT Win coming into this final with all of that enthusiasm, all of that momentum. I mean, Kyo is fired up. And, and who would it be after a performance <laughs> like that? Come into that final and get out there and get something done. It's not unreasonable. Well, if I remember, in grand finals last year, the GG boys did drop a game. So if they drop a game, they could drop two. They could drop three. They could drop the whole set right now. FT Win has all the momentum. They have this entire crowd at their back as well. There is so much going for them right now, but the GG boys ever steady. Well, what you said about FT Win, when they are at their best here, nine, they are very difficult to beat. And minus that unbelievable comeback we saw in Splat Zones by Alliance Rogue, really, FT Win almost won that thing 3-1 over a very solid European team. And that's what they're playing for right there, the Splatoon Sterling Squid. North America won it in 2017. GG Boys last year in 2018. There's room on that trophy for a champion this year, but GG Boys standing in the way of FT win. Someone's gonna go up 2-1 in the set of sets. The tournament of tournaments right here. And <laughs> you know, I, I have to wonder a little bit, GG Boys winning with such ease that they did, winning 3-0 and then waiting for, you know, the better part of an hour for that, I wonder how this first game is going to go. They might be a little mm -hmm. cold. Yeah, rhythm versus rest. It's a best of seven now. So we get even more Splatoon 2 action in our championship match between the GG boys and FT Win. We'll be doing ranked modes. But as we saw, Ashley, depending on which ranked mode comes up twice, possibly, if this does go beyond four games, is huge because you could argue that tower control being the fifth game was a big positive for FT Win. We're going to start with tower control also. And both these teams, it looks like it's one of their strongest modes. It definitely is, but I'm very curious how GG Boys is going is going to handle not really having a backliner, especially with, you know, you've got Ice back there with that Stingray, and he is a menace. He's an absolute menace. So I'm really curious to see how they respond and what their strategy is. And now you figure we'll see some Yamamichi with the Stingray as well, too. He's done a fine <laughs> of job course. of really providing yes. that backline support at times when that special comes for him. Well, I'm really interested in seeing... They've been running... I, I agree that they don't have a traditional backliner, but they've been saying, to heck with that, we're running two backliners. That's what they've done. They've done a custom explosher as well as Yamamichi's Stingray producing custom Jet Squelcher. So I think that they're trying to control the pace of the map with that double backline composition, it can work, and it has worked at the highest level. It's a control-oriented game up against an aggressive pressure-based game. Well, this was something the GG boys said earlier this week. They understand that the mechanics of the game have changed since last year, and where last year they were more aggressive with shorter-range weapons, they realized the value in longer-range weapons. And so let's get set. Tower Control, our first game in finals here between the GG boys of Japan, your defending champions, taking on FT Win from North America. Tower Control, game one here, nine. We get so excited for this one, obviously, because anything can happen, but Wahoo World, that's gonna provide some interesting strategy for this one. It will, this is a great long range map. And you actually see Kyo switching over to the Neo, the, sl uh, the sloshing machine Neo, which is not a weapon that we have seen a lot. It's got the point sensor for a sub and a bomb rush. They're gonna be using that to pressure the opponent. There's a lot of open ground here. They're gonna take it real quick with that one. FT win in the green. GG boys of Japan in the orange early on. Nobody else getting a slow. There's an early splat right there. 4-3 advantage GG boys. And oftentimes athletes, things can change in the beginning. Yamabichi gets these stingrays in 12 seconds. How about a couple of nice clean splats off the tower? Tai G right that thing to the first checkpoint. Dynamon providing some support up above with the splatter. But here comes Ice with that stingray. Trying to get a splat. Tai G, meanwhile, that Ink Jet providing some aerial support. Thank goodness they were able to get somebody out in that situation. If that Stingray found nobody, that was going to be what could have potentially been the game right there. You see two of them going down. They're just a little bit disorganized right now. They aren't taking 2v1s. GG Boys back on the tower and pressuring once again at that first checkpoint. Oh, big 1v1 victory for Yamamichi. Dynamon coming in with that baller, providing a little bit more support. Oh, Dynamon had a chance to flank him right there, but the 2v1 gets reversed and FT win flank support great defense after. Those are some really big trades there, and I think uh, new completely neutralized anything that was happening in that moment for both teams. You get the feeling here, Nine, that FT Win has finally stabilized a little bit after getting knocked on their heels early on. Well, when there's a 12-second Stingray, of course you're going to get a little taken down, and Shrek has actually gotten two picks with just random bombs that he has tossed out in the general direction. That's what zoning can do for you, and now we're starting to see a pushback the other way. 4-2 on the field for FT Win at that moment. It's now 4-3. GG boys. Now they're in the defensive. That's enough. Fine positioning right there. And how about FT Win taking the lead here, Ashley? I mean, FT1 is doing a really great job right here. Atona, though, doing the work.
Hart getting out there. He's getting a little aggressive. Let's see. Ah, uh, he doesn't quite take oh, that down. Three, one, and a nice almost wipe right there by MT Winter past the first checkpoint. And yes, GG boys, they can't get hit. They get knocked back, and MT Win starting to really push that lead, and that's a big checkpoint there, Nine. It is. This is the best that I have ever seen Shaq play. He came as he put it from the very bottom, and he is pushing up right here. You can see Shaq and Killer there as well. This is becoming a steamroll right here. They only needed one good hold to take it all the way down to 13, and that final checkpoint. GG Boys trying to fend off the final score. Shaq with some tented missiles. However, GG Boys are like, hold up a second. We have the defending champs for a reason. This thing ain't over. 4-4 on the map. GG boys, though. They do not have much room for error. They are down 71 to 9 with two and a half left. But here comes yet another Steam Race providing support. And you figure here, Ashley, this is going to be another nice push by the GG boys. It is. Uh, I am real curious, Nine. Like, do you think that might have been a little bit too early on the Sting Ray for Yamamichi? I feel like maybe he should have held it a little bit longer. Well, there were so many people that were still up in the middle of the map that I can understand using it just to try to buy yourself a little time and space. Right now, they've been losing their 1v1s. They've been getting outspaced after what was a pretty shaky opening from FC Win. Yo, as we said, getting some critical 1v1s. That point sense is going to help prevent the GG boys from playing any hide and go seek. Here comes a super jump defensively. Ty B in that ink jet, applying more pressure. And once again, GG boys, they have to go through the first two checkpoints. But this thing is far from over. Here they are, and this is where they've been un unable to get by here, Nine. Let's see if Dynavon can get some reinforcements to help out. He will need some reinforcements. You saw that Ethanol was pushed up in a great spot, and Ty G is too. Shaq trying to call out that Ty G is pressuring them. And this Stingray is going to be the most important part of the game here. Like I said before, if this can't find a pick, they're already going down. No pick right there. Tower resets itself. Head back to the middle. Yamamichi, oh, in the middle of a 2v1. Nicely done by FT Win. They've got a 4-3 advantage. Tower reclaimed by the GG boys, and that first checkpoint is clear. Tai Chi trying to bow down the traffic. Tai Chi gets a big splash. The tower for protection moves around. His teammate spawning in. 3v1 situation. Unable to escape that, and now it's 4-3 on the map, and this is the pivotal point here. The GG boys can get back on the tower here tonight. Well, this has been really scary. This is similar to traditional sports, where one team is holding possession for a long time. The GG boys have been winning the last minute of this game, and you figure it's just a moment before one of these two teams slips, and that pick right there might have done it. Yamamichi on the tower using the Stingray. It's 4-2 GG boys. Another Stingray coming back. Ice has to make this count. And huge. Get out the club, Yamamichi, as Ice uses the Stingray. But once again, the GG boys continue to apply pressure. They're right by the tower. They're being patient, taking care of any threats. Less than 20 seconds left remain. It's 4-2, though, GG boys at 9. They got to make a count right here. They do, approaching the second checkpoint. This might be some very crucial ink armor. Should allow 2D to win this 1v1, and he does. This is it right here. All of the GG boys need to stay alive as long as they can. And with two already down and four seconds left, this is going to be it, I believe. And that does it. FT win. Able to hold their ink at the end. They steal the first game of the championship from the GG boys and take a 1-0 lead, Ashley. And now GG boys, they're having to feel a little pressure in this situation. I bet. I mean, it, it, like Nine had mentioned, I mean, they've been backstage waiting, watching, sure, and making a strategy, but also waiting. And, and now FT win's got some momentum. They're, they are fired up, and they're gonna they're gonna come into this next game ready to go. The determination, the communication, the look on the face of FT Win. They are confident that this is something that they can take from the GG boys. Let's look at a couple of highlights here, Nine, as you walk us through some of the action. So many pivotal points in this match, but right now this is where FT Win really got their final big score of the game. And this is, I think, the, the telling story of the difference in between these two teams. We talked earlier about what a double backline composition can do in terms of control, but the composition that FT Win is running in the way they play, they say, to heck with your control, we're moving up and you have to play perfectly to stop us. That is why they were able to push far as they were. But I will say, some people that I've talked to before this said that tower control may be the worst mode for the GG boys. They might be looking at this saying, you know, we actually played pretty well given that. Let's go ahead and take the next one. Very interesting point. Here comes the Stingray from Ice because you felt like this is the point the GG boys had the advantage. They were up 4-2, but the splat on Yamamichi not only stops the tower, but turns the tide of momentum on the field, and FT went never shaking in their boots here, Ashley. Yeah, I mean, getting that pick on Yamamichi was a huge deal because you take one of the best Stingrays in the game out, 
Uh, you also, ha he's got to wait to respawn. He's not going to get back in time. And so, again, it becomes running down the clock. Let's take a look at our next rank mode taking place here. Best of seven, game one going to FT win from North America. But as you said, Nine, GG boys might not be sweating this loss in tower control. They know that they've got some other modes where they might be favored. We have Rainmaker coming up here next. And what's interesting is we have two Rainmakers, two tower controls in this best of seven if we go to seven. And so Rainmaker, what we saw earlier on, FT win the more aggressive team that really helped them out. But GG boys, you talk about aggressive. You're going to find GG boys in the dictionary. You will. And the fact that this is on humpback pump track as well means that they're going to be able to attack it in a number of different ways. If they opt to stick with this double backline composition, there's enough room that you can pester people from regularly safe positions. So I'm interested in seeing if they stick with this. And if this doesn't work, they might need to find a new answer quickly. And Nine, we haven't talked much about the sub abilities that you can use right now. Is there anything that you're seeing from these teams that might be turning the tide of the map or speaks volumes to their strategy possibly? Anytime you use a Kensa Splattershot Pro, which is one of the most popular weapons, Kyo has been using it, we saw Kiver using it earlier as well, you're gonna wanna stack that main power up. That can turn that thing into a three, or from a three shot splat into a two shot splat. Such an important aspect to keep in mind right there. But Ashley, Humpback Pump Track, Nine made a good point. There's really no place to hide in this map as well, too. There's so many different ways that you can be attacked. And so aggression, aggression, aggression as they get set. Let's get ready for game two here. FT win with a 1-0 lead in our finals. GG Boys trying to even this thing up. We've got Rainmaker. GG Boys of Japan in the purple. And what do we see here? Wow. Caused such a reaction here, Nine. Double custom jet squelcher? That's the answer? I've never seen this before. This is going to be two stingrays, two burst bombs, lots of range. And Etna is using the Kensa for eyes. You know, I'm going to need a minute just to recover from this one. It's actually the Octo Brush Nouveau. This is another weapon that we almost never see in competitive play. The Octo Brush itself is great. And they're trying to use that to create as much pressure. They say, Ice, you know, you have a stingray. We're going to throw two at you, buddy. FT win with an early lead of the Rainmaker, but not much going on there because this is humpback pump track and anything can happen for the most part. 2D with some ink storm ready to go, trying to provide some saturation on this map at this point. 4-4. Four, four. Neither team with a huge advantage on the map right now. Fighting for mid. A Stingray coming out once again as 2D backpedals. And Ashley, once again, the Stingrays can do so much in controlling the map on this stage. Yeah, and with two of them, it's going to be even more interesting to see how that happens. Although, Ice is so good and so precise with that Stingray that Dynamon really didn't stand a chance there. You're going to hear that Stingray scream in your dreams right now. Yamamichi, meanwhile, just hanging out low. Oh, in the middle of a 2v1. Gets splatted right there, and that's a 4-3 advantage. Rainmaker at 42. FT win. Trying to surprise GG boys once again, but nine. Getting to 21. How does that fare on this map? I mean, I think this makes the job so easy. As Shaq gets around for a flank, he might be able to win the game right here. He tries oh, wow. 11. Oh. Everything what I was about to say, multiply it by a little bit, and it's still the same here. This is a very passive composition that the GG boys are running. What they're trying to do is be able to target Isis Stingray, and then still have another one to play with the long, narrow path that that Rainmaker has to travel. It's interesting that the GG boys are adapting to the FT win strategy. Meanwhile, FT win is just going what works best best for them as well too and you see it's working well but the GG boys finally on the map right here Rainmaker stuck at the bottom of that ramp at this point Ice doing a nice job of negating that Stingray ready to go there's a look at your map 3-3 on the field three minutes left GG boys have plenty of time but now FT win Ashley you've got the lead you start to think about playing defensively to get a chance yeah yeah I mean it's th at this point that's what you want to do but Etona is making that really difficult uh, and, and that double Stingray means that You've got two players, one can focus on taking out Ice, and the other one can focus on taking out three other players. And Nine, we saw those tents of missiles part of the GG Boy strategy to really disrupt the Stingray and the camping ability of FT Win. IG getting a nice little pick on that ink jet as well, too. And this is finally where the strategy might pay off a little bit. You saw that they immediately went with the double Stingray, and that's actually going to be able to get a couple here, so they're going to get a chance to push. If Taiji wins the 1v1 and he's not able to, they might have been able to push up a little more. But you look at their composition, they just don't have that many aggressive weapons. They're relying very heavily on Stingray. It's such
such a good point. They need the specials and long range in order to get their splats in for FT win. They love the aggression. They will get up in your face and challenge you. That Rainmaker 2D's got an escort and a little bit of room to go. Yamamichi trying to negate things. Here comes yet another Stingray. Oh! Stinging on Stinging and Ice is able to survive that Sting War, Stingray War. And here comes FT win. They've got the Rainmaker. They've got the sizable lead. Now they just have to be a little bit patient here. And GG boys once again on their heels here, Nine. Well, I can't say enough how nice it is. The reason that Ice seems to always be winning these Rainmaker, uh, these Stingrays, is because he can be reactionary. And speaking of reactionary, the crowd reaching a fever pitch as 2D almost gets it there. Still back to 11, but again, the pressure that they are able to exert and the fact that Ice can wait for the Stingray to come out and respond to it means that he's always Stingraying from an advantage. Yamamichi with the Stingray. 118 left, so the GG boys running out of time. They certainly want to avoid a 2-0 hole. Here comes Taiji using that inkjet for a bit of advantage, but Shaq getting through the defenses and stopping the Rainmaker in its track. A minute left. Oh, nice little one-shot as well there. 3-2 on the field. GG boys, they have oh. a oh, four oh, no. You've got to be careful if you're FT win here. F's enough. Using that, hit the missiles to dislodge everything. And now it's 2-1. How about FT Win trying to hold their water at this point here, Ashley? I mean, FT Win's gonna have to work really hard right now to be able to hold this. There, uh, GT boys are really doing a great job. That it was a great pick, excellent pick right there. Now we reset just a little bit. They can take a chance. They can breathe. The one v ones and the two v ones. FT Win really riding those to this lead at this point. Rainmaker still in the territory of FT Win, but GG boys, you got less than 30 seconds left. You have to make something happen now. 2D getting the splat. Starting to move forward here at this point. 20 seconds left. Rainmaker up for grabs at this point. 4-2 on the map. FT win. They can close this out. They'll take a commanding 2-0 lead in this best of seven. Dynamon and the troops trying to get their push together. Here comes the Stingray. Is it going to go to overtime? Can anybody get the Rainmaker in time? Yamamichi grabs it, but he gets splatted. That does it. FT win. Once again, nine. You said it. When this team is playing at their best, it is hard to stop them. Not even the defending champs can right now. Both games have started the same way. It's been a matter of getting an early lead and then continuing to protect it and play defense. It's so much easier to play defense. And again, I think the most important moment there, when the GG boys were in command and looked like they might get a pick, Ice dove down and traded his little squid for two of theirs. The fact that he was able to get two with one jump, I think is what stopped that push in its tracks. Huge pick, huge pick. And honestly, like, I think you mentioned the double stingray is almost a really conservative approach that you can take during Rainmaker. And it felt like if you're gonna take that approach, you cannot get splatted. Because if if you're being conservative with an aggressive team like FT Win, they get, a, they get one pick on one stingray, it's, it's off to the races. And it's such a good point, Nine, because you were talking about the composition you saw from the GG boys at the beginning, and this is a team that's known to be aggressive. Well, going with some rather passive weapons here, do you think if you're the GG boys, you maybe change your strategy and go back to your old, much more hyper-aggressive ways? I don't know if hyper-aggressive is the way I'd go, but I do think that... I don't think the double backline is going to work for them right now. This has become a battle of trying to control that which cannot be controlled. And the other thing that we really need to just look at they're a control-oriented composition that is trying to play from behind, and that is not where that type of composition can succeed. 2-0 right. advantage, FT win. Let's take a look at our next rank mode coming up here. We've already seen some tower control, some Rainmaker. Clam Blitz coming up here in 9 as you go ahead and gaze into the future of this one. What are we going to see from Clam Blitz on this next map? Well, this is Snapper Canal, which is a very open map. There's a lot of room you can move on the left and to the right side, which means that the weapons that can paint better and the more mobile composition tends to win, and that's FT win right now. They're the more aggressive composition. They're the ones that's going to be able to build up the clams at a quicker pace. What's amazing to me, Ashley, is that FT win was staring a 2-1 deficit in the face in best of five. They had just been upset on splat zones at the last second. How about their resolve? They've won four straight games now. I mean, this is... Uh, th we it's not like we've seen, it's not like we haven't seen comebacks like this during the, this has been a crazy world championship and the path to it have been full of crazy upsets. I mean, we watched Australia, New Zealand, West Lime Soda come back from that 0-4 deficit. I mean, they're unstoppable right now, FT win. The Splatoon Sterling Squid, just two games away from FT win. However, the GG boys, if you want to talk about a team that won't quit, that's them, but 
Nine, as you said, between the stage and game mode, this might play into the hands of FT Win. They're going to be in the blue. Meanwhile, GG Boys of Japan in the green. And it's all about managing that clam economy on the map. But what we've seen is a very determined, confident, resolved FT Win team. And a little bit of a couple of changes in their lineup here. Yeah, we're seeing Etna go ahead and switch back over to the Umbrella. And on the other side, we see the Ballpoint Splatling that is coming out of Ice, who has had the tournament of his life so far. And he's going to try to rotate back here. It is a little bit more mobile of a backliner here. So again, the focus on mobility. On the other side, though, the GG boy is saying, now this is a bigger map. Now we can control it a little more. And finally, we don't have an objective that you can push. A couple of squid beacons coming out as well, too, allowing F2 to win to navigate this map as well, too. But you see the Tent Umbrella providing a lot of protection right there. And already, Power Clamp into the goal here for the basket. GG Boys, first one on the map. Here comes the baller. Let's see if they can add anything else to their score. But that's going to help more than anything else. The GG Boys finally taking the early lead in the game mode here, Nine. They do, but the fact that they just gave FT win what we call the pity clam right there. When your basket uh, closes after, you sc after the opponent scores, you get the chance to get a free clam. And right now we see Yamamichi just trying to get rid of ice there and with it, that pity clam. So I don't know that the one score really does a whole lot for them in this situation. Dynamon also utilizing a squid beacon to advance behind the defenses of FT Win. He's got a power clam ready to go, but you know you can't hide with it. Everyone knows where you're at. Four clams being dropped onto the field here. And you see a power clam for each team. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Team one with a baller, but Dynamon Somehow able to escape that. Oh, but FT win getting the critical splat. 4-3 on the map for them, and they have a power clamp tonight. They do, and Shaq getting another pick right here. He's going to just try to distract anyone who has that higher ground. He's going to come get what could have been an easy pick onto Taiji. That's going to be the lead, and it might be a lot more if they don't play this well. FT win. Three-point lead over the GG boys to get that one extra clam, and that is huge because you look at the penalty, and FT win, though. They've got the lead. It's going to take one power clam, though, for the GG boys to come back. So not too bad right there. Not too much damage on that side. It's still up for grabs either team. And you mentioned the use of the squid beak. It's helping teams move around here. But actually controlling the middle of this map seems to be so important right now. And neither team has really been dominant there. It really is. And you're right. They have Neither team has really been dominant controlling the center of the map. I think, really, at this point, the GG boys are just trying to slow down the pace of the game because FT win is so so out there for blood. GG boy, they get a power clamp into the basket. They now have a 10 point lead, trying to get some more reinforcements there to spill some more clams. They do, that timer continues. Etna has to get within reach. And yes, GG boys right here, Nine, applying some nice pressure, filling that basket, padding that lead. Well, I love the fact that Etna opted to move back there and say, I'm gonna continue to hold onto this spot with my umbrella that you can't do much about. I will keep this up here. We can score and keep the basket open a little longer if we need to. Otherwise, we'll take the points. 43-77, and that's huge because FT Win's going to need at least three power clams to match the score of GG Boys, or at least two power clams, and then some help. And we know how difficult it's been to score in this game so far. But we see two power clams on the map here. FT Win with a chance to make a push here, Ashley. Yeah, FT Win taking out Atona, who is probably the closest to a special, with the exception of Yamamichi. But once you do that, now he's got a respawn. He's, his special meter is gone way down, and he's really back at square one. Shaq gets a critical splash with the baller, gets the power clamp, gets it in the basket, and here's the window of opportunity for FT Win. Can they get some help and get some more points here? Here comes yet another power clamp, super jumping in, but how about Dynamo with that big time splat at the perfect call? It is. Shaq might be able to get a lead here. No, he was not able to collect a clamp. 2 is going to add one oh, more. No, no. FT Win! At the very last second, they sneak in a couple more clamps, and they take the lead with a minute left. And that penalty is huge because nine is going to take a power clam and then some for the GG boys to reclaim the lead. We come up to a minute left. Yamamichi's positioning here is important. This is where their composition will shine. They're going to be able to at least keep FT win pinned back, or at least I thought so before Shaq ran face first into a 1v2 and still got a pick out of it. Yamamichi, oh, huge pick right there. 4-3 on the map. FT win. They've got to hold on to a one-point lead. GG boys, they need a couple of power clamps in order to recapture the lead here. 30 seconds left. FT win could take a commanding 3-0 lead. Let's see if 2D and his gang. Oh, that's a big time splat as well, too. Ashley, GG boys, this is where they have to make a push, or else it's going to be a steep hill to try and reclaim that champion. A very, very steep hill uh, for them to try to reclaim. So I 
Oh, 10 seconds left. I don't know. I don't know. Can they make it? Dynamon's got a power clamp ready to go. We know it's going to be overtime as long as they have a clamp. 3-3 three, three on the map. MT with... Oh! One couple power clamps in there, and just like we saw in the semifinals, a game three overtime come from behind victory nine. The ability, they had two power clamps there. They split them up on both sides of the map. There wasn't a way for all of the members of FT Win to contribute to stopping one push. We were focused on the push on the right, but the push on the left broke through. Ashley, your thoughts? Well, my thoughts are that this baby in me is freaking out right now because I just freaked out. I, that was crazy. I can't believe we just saw that. That was so amazing. I mean, these last seconds snatched from the jaws of defeat victories are always my favorite thing to see. I just shook nine probably harder than I should ever <laughs> shake a human being in my life. That was incredible and a true testament to how just how good GG boys are and how they will fight until the last possible second. Let's take a look at a replay from that exhilarating match that we saw there and Nine, go ahead and walk us through what we saw, the split of the power clamps here. Well, I think that Etna got the pick there on the splashdown in midair. It was either that or Yamamichi, but that allowed them to move up. You see that everyone else had rotated over to stop this push and they were able to sneak back up. There's actually not even much resistance on that side. Shaq tries to go in, but you're not gonna be able to take down Abrella by yourself. Yamamichi with the power clam filling in a couple of clams and Ashley, we can't emphasize how big that victory was. GG boys, if you don't make that play at the end of the match, you're down 3-0. You now have to sweep FT win to try and reclaim the championship again. But because you get that victory, it's 2-1 and you're back in the game. Oh yeah, I mean, this is a great way for them to reclaim momentum, to get a little confidence rolling into the next mode, which this is going to be really fun to watch. I think this yes. is going to really, this might be a, a very pivotal game in, in our tournament. And I think that one of the other things that's most important about getting that win is Splat Zones is Japan's best mode. They invented the game of Splat Zones that we have tried to emulate as best we can. So they might take both of these and flip it right back to 3-2. Let's see where the rest of our destinations are in this best of seven finals. It's 2-1 favor of FT win of North America. The GG boys with an unbelievable come from behind victory. We see that Splat Zones is next. It's also back to back here, Nine. So here's a chance for the GG boys. If you say that they are as good at Splat Zones as we think they are, here's a chance for them to go up potentially 3-2 going into our final modes. And so You've talked about the competition level. Ashley, we're experiencing it right here. These teams are so well balanced. They are so well balanced. They are so calm under pressure. And I, I, that, is, that is really, to me, what separates the, the highest tier players. I mean, they don't get tilted. They don't get salty. I mean, they're just like, you know what? It's all right. I just, I got this. I'm, I'm one of the best in the world. No problem. <laughs> Going back to Splat Zones and the conversation we had with the GG boys earlier in the week where they feel like they're not going to push aggressively out of the zone. They want to defend it once they have it. What will that look like, Nine? Well, especially on Gobi Arena, which is where we're headed now, this is a map where I almost feel like you have to be willing to push up a little bit. You can see here, you talk about undulation. This has the most of any map. I think the long-range composition that they have might tilt it in their favor. Lace up your Jays and let's play some hoops in Gobi Arena as we get set here. You've got the GG boys in green. FT win from North America in the purple. It's 2-1 advantage FT win, but the GG boys are loving the side of Splat Zones. And once again, a single zone Splat Zone map. And taking a look at the composition that you see at, uh, FT win playing right here, they're running double bomb rush, which is not something that you see a ton. They know that they're going to get zoned out by all the range. So they're saying, let's put bombs up there. You can't shoot those down. Early lead for the GG boys. They're already up 25 as they control the zone and you don't see a single FT win member in this screen whatsoever. So the GG boys not messing around in splat zones right now. Edson, I've got to be careful. That's an uneatable area. Point sensor coming out. Yamamichi's going to scurry away as that Tenta missile gets deployed. And Ice once again using the Stingray. But a couple of specials, nine, and they're not able to claim the zone point yet. No, they finally do get it. But they're only one down here. Taiji, I thought maybe should have run out a little bit further. You saw that Yamamichi had respawned in that situation and does punish Ice for a bit of overextension. Still a lot of game left to be played. And Ashley, we talked about the lockout phase that's so important for FT win. Well, this is what they're going to have to do now that you see the penalty for the DP boys. Yeah, I mean, if they have that penalty, if they can go ahead and lock them out, don't let them apply a penalty to them, they're going to be in a very, very good position. Oh, huge reclamation of the splat zone by the GG 
boys. That applies a 35 second penalty to FT win. 3-2 on the map, advantage your defending champions, Nine. And that's the big thing right there. The fact that they got a 3-2 advantage means they're gonna be able to push all the way up. Kill wisely running back here, just making sure that no one's coming around the flank. He has a farm rush, he knows that they're about to have all four specials up. They should be able to take this without too much trouble. That's a very good point. You see the flashing, inkling icons at the top. Four specials ready to be deployed by FT win. Meanwhile, they're down. They've got the 4 2 advantage, FT win at this point, and they take control of this black zone after the GG boys improve their lead ever so slightly. Three minutes left. FT win trying to lock out the GG boys. They've got a 2 1 advantage, but the GG boys early on actually have controlled this entire match. Uh, they have, but I, uh, I don't know. I mean, they've got a couple of specials going, but. It's possible that that one pick just right then, that might actually not be a good thing for GG Boys. Couple of bubbles coming out, GG Boys, they take the zone, 2.30 left, plenty of time left. Both teams with a hefty penalty as well, too. Oh, and Shaq getting splatted, unable to use those Tenta missiles, and the GG Boys, they are really stepping up this game nine. They are, and this is why the long-range composition works on a map like this. You notice they're able to continue painting the zone without putting themselves in danger. That's why FT Win has opted to go with the double bomb rush composition, because they know that that's the case. But sometimes, you got to have a little more range than that. GG Boys out of the penalty box as their score continues to improve. Now they're just 17 seconds away. Stingray coming out by FT Win. And how about this? 3-2 on the map. GG Boys. Look at the time things up, 2-2. Two, two. Can FT win, stop the advance? One second oh. left, no, they can't do it. And the GG boys, after staring a 3-0 deficit in the face, have now won back-to-back -back games to tie this thing up at 2-2. Two, two. We're at least getting a game six here at nine. We are, and thank goodness for that. I was a little worried there at the start that I was gonna have to break out the broom. That will not be the case. But if you are FT win, you can say, all right, that was the worst possible draw we could have gotten. That was a map that favored their composition on a mode that they are supposed to be best at. I don't think they're losing too much sleep over that one. And you're right, FT win, they put up quite a fight during that match, even though the GG boys seem to always control the zone. And Ashley, mentality-wise, you were up 2-0. You lose another close game you feel like you should have won if you're FT win. Now it's 2-2, and you're going back to splat zones once again. What's your approach? Well, the nice thing is for FT Win is that they have just played a game mode, they're gonna play again. So they really ha understand what the strategy is for the GG boys. So they can say, okay, let's regroup, let's figure out how we can, let's figure out how we can shake up the strategy a little bit and also take back a little bit of that momentum. As we said, Splat Zone's coming up next, but also a different map, which might favor a different composition here, Nine. And what are we going to see in our second go around of Splat Zones in this finals? Muscle Forge Fitness, and this is a very scary map to play it on here. They're the big side. Some people call it the volcano that you can come up, and it's a big, big zone as well. I think we're going to see some bomb rush, perhaps from both teams, but double baller. Keep an eye out for that. That can flip the zone in a heartbeat. Well, I know you busted out some curls at Muscle Forge Fitness earlier this morning, so it's looking great right there, my friend. And Ashley, the GG boys, they have to be feeling very confident now because you were down 2-0, you've taken the last two, and it's your game mode that you really love to see. Yeah, I mean, this is a really, this is really in their favor. And so it will be very difficult for FT Win to come out and win this one, especially if Especially if GG Boys can come out and really take that lead early, I think they have an excellent chance of holding that lead. And Nine, you look at the composition for the GG Boys, and we saw for the first couple of modes, they were more so reacting to what FT Win was. It seems like the last two games, they've just decided, we're going to do what works best for us. Right, and I think that the, the mode changing into modes that they're more comfortable in allowed them to play that game. And I think that the fact that they lost those first two games and now get to go through three potential wins before they have to see either of those again gives them plenty of time to figure out what they want to do. This is a huge swing game right here. 2-2 two, two FT win versus the GG boys. Whoever takes this will be just one win away from the championship. And this Splatoon, Sterling, Squid, Muscle Forge, Fitness. You've got FT win representing North America in the yellow. And of course, the GG boys of Japan in the blue. Loadouts, nine, what do we got here? Well, I was wrong. There's not going to be a double baller. In fact, there's only going to be one baller on the map. Again, these teams are going with some more indirect ways to capture the zone. A lot of respect for each other right now. Two L3s as well, too, for the GG boys. Nobody's got the zone right now. The GG boys finally secure it. Let's see if they can maintain and provide a little bit of a lockout. They're up 4-2 already, actually, with FT Win having to spawn back. Yeah, I mean, watching Ice jump away there, that was probably <laughs> a really good idea because it wasn't looking too good for him. So uh, they're going to have to FT1's gonna have to regroup. Yamamichi already out there with the snakes. 
Inkjet, Stingray ready to go, and two other specials for the GP boys. So nine, they're doing a great job of stacking their specials early on. They are, and they're willing to trade as many people as it takes to build this big lead, because we have seen how easy it is to flip a zone back. And as long as you're in the lead, you're okay with flipping it back and forth, because you know the penalty continues to stack. That's such a good point. You can take the biggest pie, bite of the pie early on, but you don't have that penalty. But right now, FC win trying to lock out GP boys. GP boys trying to wrestle back control. You see the nice little 1v1 flat right there, and Shaq getting splatted as well, too. GT boy with a 3 2 advantage. Yeah, make it 3 1. <laughs> How straight. about that? Ice goes all the way back. Kyo saying, I'm just going to take down whoever I can here. It's not like I was going to get much done anyway. So I like that, and I like the fact that uh, they are continuing to fight, and that's actually a great way to continue to get your team spawned again. I love this overhead view. You see that they're trying to build as much special meter as they can with very limited room to do it. And they have the time to do it because the penalty's going down right now for GG boys. They're not improving on their score. FT went also with a very small penalty, so they can afford to be a little bit more patient. But the Stingray from Yamamichi once again applying that pressure, and now the GG boy. About 30 seconds away here, actually, for making it 3-2. Yeah, GG boys right there. Yamamichi taking out Ice is a huge deal because they had... FT Win had three different specials going all at once. And so to be able to take one of those off the board is a really, really big advantage for GG Boys. All right, FT Win has got control of the zone. Their penalty's done now. You see a sizable one for the GG Boys. FT Win, if they're gonna dig down deep and find something to apply some pressure against the GG Boys, now's the time to do it. But the GG Boys, nine, so calm, so cool, so collected timing the use of their specials so well. Right, and I think that uh, going in really deep with this inkjet here might come back to bite Saiji, gonna try to hide away, and actually gets the pick on to kill. That's a big one. Fine taking that trade to Ice there. The frontline aggressor is gone, and now they have a Stingray that they can use to pick off Ice with a little bit slower of a weapon to kill us. You see that heavy splatling trying to cover the zone, but the Stingray from Yamabichi continues to just dominate this matchup. GG boys almost out of the penalty. They reclaim it. They've got a couple of bubbles supporting things in there as well, too. And now, 12 seconds away, GG Boy trying to lock it out. Here comes Kyo with a well-timed splashdown, though. Can FT win seize control and apply a penalty? They do. They're still in there, actually. Let's see if they can turn back to come back on the GG Boy. Kyo is doing an amazing job right now. I mean, two huge picks right there. That is going to give them a very, very nice cushion in which to, to pick up some points here. A couple of specials being built up for the GG Boys. They're going to be ready to play some defense. FT win. Nine, you figure this is the time they have to lock out GG boys if they want to come back to this thing. They have, and watch the staggers of the special here right now. They've already used two of them. The third one is going to go. They're going to try to make it feel like specials are coming all the time. One goes down and one jumped out. That's as good as two down. Let's make it three as well. And they are again fine trading these points as they get another one there. A little bit of a little bit of a hiding squid there in the corner. But again, they're okay making that trade because with just one minute left, they know that they only have to do it maybe one more time. And that's such a good point. They have control of the zone and the timer is ticking down now. And so FC win, you're up in the face against the ticking clock here. You've got to be able to seize control of this zone here soon. But the GG boy, couple specials ready to go. They're just five seconds away. Can FC win claim the zone? They do! the last second one point away and now they wrestle it back from the gg boys and it's 4-3 on the map mt win let's see if they can write their own storybook ending in a splat zone matchup nine <laughs> kyo has kept the game alive for them twice he won a 1v2 earlier he had a splashdown to meet the bubbles his splash down there took it at the very end he is willing this team to keep in this match huge stingray from ice coming out right now oh and gets a splash MT win just 33 seconds away from stealing victory from the GG boys. It's 4-2 on the map here, Nine. Ashley, they might get it done here. I can't believe what I'm seeing. This is amazing. It, it, it looks like they may actually keep them out. Taiji's going to do his best here, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Three seconds left. No way. GG no way. No way. No way. control. Eight seconds left and a complete play from MT win. And the GG boys, they were looking at defeat straight in the face, but they don't cower as they come up with the defensive stand of the tournament here, Nine. They did it with no specials. They did that without a single special. Taiji's right there was not used at all in that push. I cannot believe it. To see a push, a 4-0 wipe at the end of the game when the opponent knows we just have to hold it for a handful of seconds and to get it without needing a single special might be the best. Look at this from Taiji. I mean, this is amazing. He gets in there. Kyo gets taken out. And Tona right there giving that support that's needed. And they're able to take that right back. Oh, my gosh. The 2v1, as you said, 
No specials required, just special ability from these players. The GG boys almost losing a splat zone, which would have been a huge steal of a game by FT win. You look at what this team is able to do. GG boys now winning three straight games. They're one away from repeating as champions, but Ashley, it's the two game modes coming up here that FT win has already won. They have, right, they've already won these two game modes. I mean, they're coming in, they can say, I, we can come in confident here. And as we've talked about, even if they win this, you know, if they win this, tower control might be theirs because as you were saying, Nine, GG boys, that might be their worst mode. It might be, but they could not have asked for a better Rainmaker map. This is Kelp Dome Rainmaker right here, a fairly infamous map in the Splatoon community, but it is also the easiest map to defend. They're gonna be able to stack two Stingrays, three Stingrays if you want. There's only one way the Rainmaker's gonna push. But you have to have the lead in order to defend. And what we've seen from FT win is their ability to take early leads. But in these last three victories, it's been the GG boys that have gone out first. If you're FT win, how important is it for you in this one to take the early lead and take away the defensive advantage for the GG boys? I think it's a requirement. I think that if they have to play from behind, that will play exactly into how the GG boys want to play. If the GG boys get an early lead, I don't think FT win can break through. GG boys just one game away from etching their names onto the Splatoon Sterling Squid once again. However, FT win. They won Rainmaker earlier in this best of seven. They want to take game six and give all of us a game seven here. The crowd's been fantastic. I know that this is what they've been looking forward to. At least a game six here between two of the top squads in the world here, Ashley. Any pressure on any one of these teams at this point when you look at a game six here between these two? Both of them. I mean, this is both of them. They, you know, you've got FT win. They got to come out swinging. GG boys have to do the exact same thing. I mean, this is... This almost feels like the real pivotal. I mean, th this is this is it for me. Like, whoever wins this is going to come into that game seven. I I if we need a game seven, it's going to come into that game seven, like, really raring to go. And what's been interesting, Nine, is how much of the time these teams have been using. There's so much strategy and counter strategy going back and forth. Once again, FT win was just moments away from taking a 3-0 lead. But a come from behind last second overtime victory in Clam Blitz by the GG boys spurred a 3 0 run by them. They're now just one game away. Well, the teams have seen these maps ahead of time. But I think they're taking the time to catch their breath. And I think it is not without merit as we start off game six. Here we go. Game six. Rainmaker, Kelp Dome, GG boys of Japan in the purple. One game away from claiming the championship. FT win in the green. They're looking to push this thing to a game seven. And early on, what are we seeing here? Ashley, as we see both teams kind of fight for control in the middle of the map. Yeah, you're going to want to get a couple of picks before you pick up that Rainmaker. You can see Shaq just hear it, but not quite picking it up. We, they know they need to take out a couple of oh. PG boys. And nice, it doesn't quite work out. Nice trade right there. Some good race support. And we talked about trying to get the early lead. And not able to do anything with the Rainmaker there right now, Nine. And you look at the GG boys, they have the player advantage on the map. The fact that Shaq was only able to get one of those two, I think, was huge. And again, saving the punishment there and forcing Ice to head back to spawn when he was sitting there ready to punish is big. CKO off inside. I don't know if they know he's here. He might be able to slow this down. They spot him off just in time. We're going to get a chance for a push right here. GG boys, we talked about that early lead, how important it is for them. They're not on the board quite yet, but here they go. They finally are able into able to get into the half of MT win. So GG boys with that first early lead, now we might see more of that defense here, Nine. Well, 30, 67, you're gonna see a lot of stop right in that area. You see that door right there, and you see the fact that there is not much room. That is the key moment. The fact that Shaq was able to get all three means that any push that was started was gone and completely gone. We're gonna see Ice try to do the same thing on the other side. Big opportunity to take the lead for FT win here. You wanna take away that defensive opportunity for the GG boys. Yo, trying to get some pressure and chase out Etna. Etna trying to avoid all the flats. Oh, corner. And already the lead is taken by MT Win, and you mentioned that is the tight corner you're trying to get into. And Ashley, MT Win doing what they wanted to get an early lead. Dynamon sitting here waiting, just waiting. He's lurking. He's lurking around the corner. That hallway, I mean, that is a choke point of all choke points. So it's a very <laughs> difficult get past there, especially with Taiji on that inkjet. He is so, so accurate. IG in the inkjet, 4-3 on the field right now. GG boys, and they are down to FT win, 59-67.
They can't rely on playing defense with those ranged weapons, but a splashdown picked off in midair will do huge things for the PT boy. That's the gamble, and this level splashdown ain't what it used to be, and I love the fact that they immediately opt to move up and try to put pressure on 2D. They know that someone's going to be waiting in this area. They're trying to get there preemptively, and 2D able to get off his special and maybe even a pick. The fact that his special is there, though, might be big for the defense. MT win. Looking for one more game to force a game set. They're down 4-3 on the map right now, and the DG boys are looking to steal the lead. But once again, that Stingray by Ice has been the saving grace for FT win, Ashley. I mean, Ice is going to be there waiting for that corridor. I mean, that's where you hold that special for. As soon as they get to that doorway, it's time. Yamamichi, though, doing the exact same thing. Taichi's going to go ahead and take it forward. Yamamichi. Providing the Stingray support, they're able to mow down FT win like a Saturday morning launch. 3-2 on the map for a moment here, but now it's 4-4. And if you're FT win, you've got to get the Rainmaker out of here. GG Boy, who's just 30 points away from claiming another championship. Everybody's in this room right now, Nine. Oh, and Kill getting stuck there. I don't know if it'll come back to bite them because Tenmon by himself. So that will be the end of that push. But again, to be able to get it to 30, that starts to get into the danger zone. And with just 90 seconds left, there's not much time. 2D trying to go through the back door, however, gets splatted. And that's a difficult spot for the Rainmaker to land. Because now, if you're FT win, you got to dig it out of there. And if you're the GG boy, you have a minute and a half of defense left. But here goes Ice by himself. He's going to need a little bit more support. But at least you have the Rainmaker on their map. Not going to survive that onslaught of first bomb. Ashley, GG boys. All they've got to do is hold down home base at this point. They do, and Yamamichi already has his stingray ready, so it looks like he's going to go ahead and do that. One minute left. The GG boys up 30 to 59. They have the Rainmaker. Inkstorm coming out. Ten to missiles. You see the global view. MT win down 4-2 on the map. Huge swing right here, Nine. It was. That Stingray got a pick, and then Etima came and got a second one. This means they're going to control the middle going in to this final push. They might opt to just sit here and shoot as many shots as they can. They just want to milk the clock. That's such a good point. You talk about the tight corner. Oh, but FT win getting the splat. It's 2-2 two -two and some Stingray support from Ice. You're going to have time for about one more push here, Nine. FT win trying to keep their tournament hopes alive. Meanwhile, GG boys just moments away from yet another championship. It is, and again, they're gonna try to probably let this reset, and Dynamo gonna do whatever he can to just milk more time. He used that special really early and even got the pick. Taiji's gonna grab it. He knows he's going down there, but they're keeping the Rainmaker there. 12 seconds left, 3-1 on the field. GG boys, they can smell victory. They want to be repeat champions. They just have to protect the Rainmaker. FT win trying to turn things around. The GG boys get it done, and how about that? Staring 0-3 in the face. The defending champions rise from the ashes like a phoenix and go 4-0 in a row. And the GG Boys of Japan, your Splatoon 2 World Champions for 2019. If you want any example of why maps can change everything in Splatoon 2, that was the best Rainmaker map that the GG boys could have hoped for. Once they got that first big push that was opened up by a Stingray, a pick here, a pick there, all they had to do was keep it there, and that's why they got that win. Ashley, how crazy was this? FT win when they were down 2-1 in the semifinals. They win four straight matches to take a 2-0 lead in the finals. The GG boys, as we mentioned, that last second victory, they win four straight, and here they are in the middle. They are victorious. Give it up for the GG boys, your Splatoon 2 World Championship 2019 winners. And just the resolve from this team, they are now back-to-back -back champions. Going to see their name twice on the Splatoon Sterling Squid. Just an unbelievable effort as they dug themselves back from a 2-0 hole here, Ashley. I mean, what an absolute effort by every single one of those players. I I couldn't possibly even pick an MVP because I feel like that was a true team effort. Uh, although, I don't know, man. Y'all would beat you with those teammates. <laughs> well, it's so difficult at this level nine, and I think you said it better than anybody else. This was one of the most balanced championships that we would ever have. You saw a best of five go to five games between Team USA, Team Europe, and then finally you go to game six with the GG boys as they are victorious and they are your Splatoon 2 World Championship 2019 winners here to honor and celebrate our champions here. Put your hands together for the man himself.
producer for Splatoon 2, Mr. Nogami! So as Mr. Nogami passes out the medals to our defending champions, we do want to give a round of applause to all of our teams here. Of course, Lime Soda from Australia, New Zealand, Alliance Rogue from Europe, and how about the fight that FT Win put up from North America? Almost took the 3-0 lead, but the GG boys once again, proving why they're champions and proving why they're so hard to splat. Back-to-back -back world championships for the GG boys, and now let's toss it down to Mr. Nogami for some comments. えー、それでは優勝した GG ボーイズの,の皆さん、2連覇おめでとうございます。So、congratulations to the GG boys on their second win in a row. いや、本当にあのちょっと裏で見てても、もうドキドキするような戦いの連続で、あのヒヤヒヤしましたけども、本当に勝ててよかったなと思います。So I was pretty nervous myself watching your play backstage, but I'm happy to be standing here giving you these congratulations. あ,あの日本チームばっかりひいきしてるわけじゃないですけどねって<笑>はい、えー、<笑>すみませんあの会場の皆さんも本当に盛り上げていただいてありがとうございます And thank you everybody here in the stadium for getting so loud for this, this competition <笑>はいであのちょっと僕の方からお伝えしたいことがあります And there's something I would like to share with you. So we'd previously announced that Splatfest would be supported for two years from Splatoon 2's launch. Next month, on July 21st, Splatoon 2 marks its second anniversary. And to coincide with that, we'd like to hold the last, the biggest, and baddest Splatfest of them all. Please take a look at this video. はい、えっ、ー、とファイナルフェスのお題はどちらの世界を望む混沌 vs 秩序です。So the theme for this final Splatfest is which world would you choose, chaos or order? でファイナルフェスでは新しいミステリーゾーンに加えて過去に過去のフェスで登場したすべてのミステリーゾーンが変わる側に登場します。This final Splatfest will not only feature a new shifty station stage, but The shifty stations from all previous Splatfest will also make an appearance. またファイナルフェスに合わせて特別なギアも配信されます。And we'll also be distributing some unique new gear for this Splatfest. 開催期間は2019年7月18日から21日の72時間。This event will take place over the course of 72 hours from the 18th of July to the 21st. 皆さんはこのイカたちの世界に何を望むでしょうか最終決戦スプラトカリプスにぜひ参戦してください And so I ask you all what sort of a world would you wish for the Inklings and their friends Make sure not to miss out on this final Splatfest Splatocalypse そしてえー、ファイナルフェス終了後の7月末頃に更新データバージョン 5.0 を配信して
プライベートマッチで使用できるルールに縄張りバトルフェスを追加します And last but not least, once the final Splatfest comes to a close, in late July, we'll be releasing the version 5.0 update that will add the Turf War Splatfest to the modes you can choose in private battle. このルールでは、ファイナルフェスで新たに追加されるものを含む24のミステリーゾーンで縄張りバトルを楽しむことができるようになります。In this mode, players will be able to battle out Turf War matches on all 24 Shifty Station stages, including the new stage released for the final Splatfest. You'll be also be able to, uh, to play the nighttime version of these 23 currently available regular stages in this mode. So get together with your friends and host some private Splatfests of your very own. As we've mentioned previously, this represents the last of our regular Splatfest events and new content updates. But this will not spell the end of Splatoon 2's online service. We hope you'll give it your all in the final Splatfest and continue to enjoy Splatoon 2. So let's please cheer on our winners for today, GG Boys. Well, once again, our champions, the GG Boys, defending champions. And how about that bit of news that we get dropped on us as well, too? Splatocalypse coming here, the final Splatfest. Guys, your thoughts on this championship once again? Uh, man, I, what a great championship series. I mean, that's the type of series you always want to see, especially in Splatoon. These are two great teams. It was a joy to watch them. And I think anytime you have a tournament that is this good, that ends like this, with this level of competition, you can't help but be hopeful that the game has so much room to grow and continue to surprise us. Shout out to all of our teams. Thank you once again, Ashley, Nine, Milana, as well, these fantastic fans. But get set, we have the Super Smash Brothers Ultimate World Championship 2019. 3v3, Fish, Kells, and EE bringing you that action. We'll see you here shortly.